Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. spies. Don't be fooled by the disrepute into which the spy has fallen in the news and in our estimation. The spy has always been with us. Secretly or furtively, he seeks information with the intention of giving it to a hostile party. And for every spy, there is a counter-spy. What motivates them? Greed? That is true of an informer, but not of a spy. Usually, it's love of country. Sometimes, it's hatred of another. Mr. Ferris, we are in trouble. You are suspected. Well, so you said, but I don't see how. The coded telephone message, it was audited. That is why our plan to destroy the tanker off Galveston failed. Two valuable men are dead, and the plan failed. Your usefulness to us may be over. After all the information I've supplied to you? For which you were paid substantially. You are merely a paid informer. You have been useful to us. We do not want to lose you as our supplier. And I don't want to be exposed. We would not allow it. You know too much. Before you would have a chance to talk, you would be dead. mystery drama, The Ferret, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Elliot Reed. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. history was recorded, kings and heads of clans, barbarian despots, and even the semi-civilized employed spies and paid them fortunes for secret information which might tip an advantage to them. Although we are adjured to treat our fellow men as we would treat a brother, life does not work out that way. We want what another has, and sometimes we achieve it by subterfuge. And the instrument of subterfuge is the spy. Cocktail, Monk? Ah, no, thanks. You go ahead, Amory. You deserve one after what happened in Galveston. Well, for once, we fixed their wagons. It is Ferris, right? No question about it. You intercepted the coded telephone call. I have no doubt that it was phoned in by Ferris. Yeah. He's the only person I know of at Energy Exploration who has contact with Warren. Well, it's hard to believe. A guy in a big security job selling out his own country. For what? Money. Well, when do we move in on him? We don't. Not yet. But I... No, no. I've had instructions from Washington. We've got Ferris whenever we want him. But we want the big fish behind him. The men paying him for the information. Warren? And many more. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, there are ways of making Ferris talk. No good. Warren and the others would just scatter, and before they did, Ferris could be dead. They play rough. You know that. Yeah. What's the plan? Cat's paw. Mm-hmm. Who? Me. Washington's orders? My suggestion, but they bought it. All right, fill me in. I'm about to, Monk. My life will be in your hands. <laughs> must be feeling pretty good, darling. I am. Had a pleasant day, Laurie? Oh, better than usual. I visited Penny's teacher. Our 12-year-old has been put into advanced study. Whoa, that's good news. <laughs> I didn't know she was an overachiever, except at tuning in the television set. 
Well, that pleased me, of course. But the reason I said you must be feeling good is the article in tonight's paper. Oh? Oh, I, I read a contract on the train, so I didn't buy a paper. What article? It's by some columnist, waving the flag about somebody's quick work in Galveston. Ah, the oil tanker. How can you be so complacent about it, Amory? I'm not. It was one of our small achievements. Small? We prevent a tanker from being blown up, and you call it a small achievement? It saved our country millions of gallons of oil. Two of the men who planned the sabotage were killed. Yes, and there were more where they came from, Loris. But we're doing something about it. For a year, all I've heard from you is that one project after another at energy exploration is being hindered because the information is being leaked to enemies in other countries. You've been worried about it, and so has Clem Ferris. Oh, he's been concerned, all right. Well, I should think he would be. How can it happen? Everyone at the Bureau has been carefully screened. Isn't that where the leak is? How is that possible? If we knew, darling, we'd do something about it. There must be an informer there. Could be. Security is watching every one of us very carefully. Even you? Even me. Even though I'm just the lawyer who specializes in land deeds. Oh, it's got to be some scientist. <gasps> Maybe some man in geodynamics. Hmm? Their knowledge of sources of raw energy would be worth a lot to anyone who wants to cripple our energy program. <gasps> Maybe there's a spy. If there's an informer, Loris, you can be almost certain there's a spy. Then isn't there also a counter-spy? <laughs> I really wouldn't know, darling. Sometimes you can be so <laughs> unsatisfactory. There you are, working at a sensitive bureau, overrun with informers and spies and counter-spies. Oh, and... Loris, you read too many spy novels. You don't believe that kind of thing goes on? Oh, probably, in a very business-like way. Spying is a business, just as the law is a business. I don't want to disillusion you. But you laugh at me. Telephones are tapped. There is microfilm. And micro-recorders in tie bars and cufflinks and so on. Yes, I suppose so. But what's important are not those who play the cloak and dagger game. It's the country or the person behind them. We may have prevented one tanker from being blown up and two men were killed. They were only tools. It's those behind them we have to worry about. You know more about all this than you're telling me, Amory. I sense it. What is it? Who is it? I don't even dare to tell myself. What? I mean it, Loris. Speculation could be an invitation to a trip to the morgue. Good evening, Mr. Ferris. Evening. You would like something? A cocktail, perhaps? No, thanks. Let's get this over with, Warren. My uh, nerves are a little ragged. Understandable. To some, life is precious. You do not want to lose yours. You might say that. It depends on the plan we have worked out. Perhaps it will succeed, but we are dealing with a very dangerous person, the ferret, a counter-spy. We assume it is a man. The ferret? Who the devil is the ferret? Ah, we would give a great deal to know. It is a person without a shadow. You think perhaps this ferret works for energy exploration? How else to explain the suspicions now directed at you? The intercepted coded telephone message. Yeah. Well, you said you had a plan. Does it involve me? Yes. Critically. I pointed out that the counterintelligence wants more than just you. It wants to net those behind you, those I represent. So they wait. We cannot afford to wait. If we destroy the ferret, the evidence against you is destroyed. All right. What do you want me to do? Look, it's quite simple. You are being followed, of course. Oh? Uh, don't be naive. You come into New York by train each day, isn't that so? Yes, I board at Larchmont, an 8 o'clock train. Good. And tomorrow? Mm, same routine. Also good. Now, when we leave this restaurant, you go to Grand Central, yes? Yes, I'll take the 645 home. And with you, you will take a package. All right. What's in it? A detail, and unimportant. Now, uh, tomorrow morning, when you take the train from Larchmont, you will have the package with you. All right. And you will lose it. 
You will leave it on the rack overhead on the train. And that is all. Hello there. Yeah, what can I do for you? I uh, lost a package when I came in this morning on the 8 o'clock from Larchmont. Oh, what's it look like? Oh, uh, it's a box about 12 by 18 and 3 inches deep. It's wrapped in brown paper. Your name on it? It, uh, it might be. Ferris. Clem Ferris. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, I got it. That's it? Yes, that's it. Okay, sign here. There you are. And thank you. That's okay. Goodbye. Well, it worked, Amory. How do you feel? Nervous. Did you see the kid with the camera? No. <laughs> Pretty smooth. 18 or so. I talked to him. He was taking pictures, he said, for some school project. Down in Lost and Found? Oh, sure. He said he'd been all over Grand Central. He likes them light beams that filter down into the upper level. Swell. And he got a picture of me? That's right. Just when you turned away from the guy in Lost and Found. Well, you're it now, Amory. Operation Cat's Paw. Yeah. Now what? We have lunch across the street, and then I have a surprise in store for Mr. Ferris. I'd like to see his face when you walk in on him. <laughs> oh, I'll be just my pleasant, simple self. Yes, Linda. Amory Mills? Certainly. Send him in. Hi, Clem. Look what I found. My... My package? Where did you get my package? Lost and found. Grand Central. Oh, for heaven's sakes. How the devil did... Don't you... I deserve a thank you? Of course. I, I, I'm just mystified. Uh, how, how did you know I'd, I'd lost it? I left it on the train this morning, and I was going to pick it up tonight. I really don't understand. Oh, it's quite simple, Clem. A friend of mine, Ted Palmer, rides the same 8 o'clock you take into town from Larchmont. He's always the last off the train. He saw the package and turned it into lost and found. But how, how did you find out about it? I, I'm just curious. Well, Ted and I played squash and had lunch. He told me about picking up a lost package. I asked him more about it, and he suddenly remembered your name and that I work here with you. So I strolled over to Lost and Found, picked it up, and saved you a trip. I see. Well, that's something. Thanks, Amory. I, I appreciate it. Oh, that's all right. I've done my good deed for the day. Linda, try to reach Mr. Warren at his office. Leave a message. I must see him at 5.30 at Geno's on 53rd. Tell him it's important. His face dropped a foot, Monk. <laughs> what about this Ted Palmer? Uh, don't worry about Ted. I can trust him. I gave him the story we agreed on. Well, didn't he ask any questions? Sure. I told Ted to say he'd found a package left on the train. Then we played squash, and over lunch he remembered the name Ferris told me, and I picked up the package to save Ferris the bother. Uh -huh. Wasn't your friend curious? Certainly. But Ted's a good guy, and he'll stick to the story. I told him he'd read all about it one of these days in the papers. Well, he's got to know you're mixed up in something funny, Amory. Like, how come you go out of your way to pick up the package at Lost and Found? Unless he's a dope, he'd have to wonder. He's no dope, and he did wonder. I told him I'd explain later. Oh, listen, stop worrying about Ted. Okay. Well, now I got something for you. Did you know that Ferris is meeting Warren at Geno's? No. Neither did I. I've called off Ferris's tail, so who except Ferris would know he's meeting Warren? I have no idea. How'd you find out? Phone call? Man or woman? Hard to tell. I'll be darned. Wheels within wheels. It's a big operation, Emery. Do you think... Do you think the ferret could be involved in it? Maybe. This cat's paw idea sounds like one of his. Or hers. In some ways, each of us leads a double life. We appear one way to those whom we report to, another way to those we trust, 
and regard as harmless. We have two faces. Think about it. Why do we ever practice deception? For self-protection. If you're severely critical of your boss, chances are you'll be discharged. If you have reason to believe that your son-in-law is cruel to his wife, do you tell him so? Not often. Then, what about a spy? Consider his way of life as it continues to unfold when I return for Act Two. The ferret is a spy, a counter spy. He wears a number of faces, one for his wife, one for his employer, another for his friends, to whom he appears to be just an ordinary person, and still another as he goes about his dangerous business. And it is dangerous. His death would go unmarked. Even though we know who Amory Mills really is, we are about to discover what a counter-spy does. The stake is high. It's his life. You are impetuous, Mr. Ferris. You are suspected. We should not be seen together in a public restaurant. I had to see you. The package was picked up at Lost and Found and returned to me. Ah, the plan worked. Wait, you say it was returned to you? That I did not anticipate. We expected the package to be cleaned and examined, but returned to you? That's right. It's odd. We have a picture of the man who claimed it. Here, see this. Well, that's Amory Mills. He's a lawyer for us. What do you make of it? What did he say? A friend of his named Ted Palmer picked up the package. He turned it in. My name was on it. Palmer and Mills had lunch together. Palmer mentioned the package, and Mills picked it up to save me some trouble. That's the story. Yes, it could very well be a story. I don't like it. It sounded straight to me. I spoke to Palmer. He confirms what Mills told me. Either it is true, or your Amory Mills is the counter-spy in your company, the ferret. Mills? Nonsense. He's just a simple, competent lawyer. Works on land deeds. He's open and good-hearted. I must judge for myself. Can we arrange that? Oh, I suppose so. Uh, tonight I will accompany you home, if it is not too much of an inconvenience for Mrs. Ferris. Now, this is what we must arrange. Hey, you're on time. Sure. The train made it for once. Well, wash up. We're going out. Oh? Lucille Ferris telephoned and insisted we come over for cocktails. Her husband's bringing home some big shot from some export-import company, uh, Mr. Uh, Warren. M maybe you know him. Warren? No, I don't know that name, Loris. Oh, honey, do we really have to go? I thought I'd watch television with Penny. Oh, good heavens, Amory. This is Mr. Ferris, your boss. We can't turn them down. Now go on, wash up, and change. And darling, don't bug Ferris about your concerns. If I'm concerned, he must be a lot more concerned. Information must be leaking out of there to our enemies. Oh, enemies. Darling, the world isn't like that. The newspapers said that... Well, the... sure, there's spying going on, but there's counter-spying, too. I just can't believe there's a spy in every closet. Then you explain why, time after time, there's an attempt made to destroy a new offshore oil rig, or there's a mysterious explosion in a natural gas field, or a tanker sinks without explanation. Explain those, Amory. And you don't think there are enemies at work? And right in your company, which is a very sensitive one, energy exploration is almost like a government agency. Someone in there is stealing confidential information. Mr. Ferris knows that. I want to ask him what he's doing about it. Well, he won't tell you much. Why should he tip his hand? Well, maybe not. I just want to hear from him that something is being done about it. Just because you're complacent doesn't mean I am. Now, go on. Clean up. Who'd you say the guest was? Uh, the import-export big shot? Warren, uh, Mr. Warren. You don't 
mind my asking all these questions, Clam? Oh, certainly not, Loris. I'm interested that you're concerned. So is Amory, I'm sure. Oh, of course. But uh, security isn't my line of work. You do legal work, yes, Mr. Mills? That's right. I'm one of the lawyers at the company. All those confidential documents. Oh, sure. Land condemnation proceedings. Nothing confidential about those. The suits are tried in the newspapers before we ever get to court. You proceed against the owners? We have to. It's tough on them, but if we have to have the land, the courts condemn it. Well, that is confiscation. The people are paid a fair price for their property, Mr. Warren. It's the greater good for the greater number. Oh, yes, yes. The democratic principle. You don't believe in it, Mr. Uh, Warren? It is Warren, isn't it? English name? Uh, yes, yes. On my mother's side, partly. In this country, I take her family name. Oh, I see. No, you do not see, Mrs. Mills. I am many things. My father was from the Mediterranean. My mother, English. My blood is from the desert and from France and England. It is mixed. So are my thoughts about the different forms of government. Here, it is the principle of the greatest good for the greatest number. Under a demagogue... A dangerous concept. Hitler preached it. He distorted it. Now, darling, let's not get into that. Don't be a flag waver. Well, I don't know why not, Damery. Loris is a concerned American. Nothing wrong with that, is there? No, but uh, as I was saying to Loris earlier this evening, I just can't imagine that there's a spy in every closet. But something's been going on at Energy Exploration. You said everyone was worried about it and that security had been tightened. And maybe that's why that oil tanker escaped. Isn't that so, Clem? Why, yes, I suppose so. Oh, you must have been pleased. The bureau's been ripped off so many times. Uh, ripped off? Uh, slang for stealing, Mr. Warren. Ah. You suspect that someone has been stealing information, Mr. Mintz? Oh, I wouldn't really know. As I said, I'm just the lawyer in charge of land deeds, things like that. Well... It's obvious to me. Darling, you have got spies on the mind. You read too much fiction. Well, there's a lot in them, and they're not all that much fiction. Well, I'll join the ladies. And don't be too long, Amory. We have to get the babysitter home. All right, there. Good night, Clem. Mr. Uh, Warren. Good night, Laura. Good night. Ah, nice party, Clem. Glad you enjoyed it. I wanted you to meet Mr. Warren here. He's a, an old friend of mine from the time I was an embassy clerk in the Middle East. I told him about the adventures of my missing package. A delightful story. It is like fiction. No, just fact. My friend Ted Palmer found it and mentioned it to me at lunch. Mm. I walked across the street to Grand Central and lost and found and picked it up, returned it to Clem. Very considerate. Well, Clem carries important papers from time to time. We don't want them to slip into the wrong hands. Meaning? Mm, Loris does get worked up about the Bureau and the series of accidents we've had in the field, but she may have a point. It would be to the advantage of some countries to impede our plan to become energy-free. Yes, I see. It is not a nice world. Oh, by the way, Emery, I thanked your friend Ted Palmer this afternoon. Oh, that was considerate of you, Clem. It is a strange story, Mr. Mills. Not really, Mr. Warren. Just a good deed. Now, uh, if you'll excuse me. Of course. We do have a babysitter to get home. Good night, Mr. Warren. Good night. Uh, uh, don't bother to see me out, Clem. I'll say good night to Lucille, and uh, I'll see you in the office tomorrow. That is where he is wrong. What do you mean? He is the man. Amory Mills, the ferret? Oh, he's just a simple going along. No, you're wrong. He is a very dangerous counter spy. We think he is tricked into reclaiming that package. He plays into our hands, only to return the package to you with a story so preposterous you believe it. I ask you, Mr. Ferris, who would hear about a lost package and then go out of his way to pick it up and return it to its owner? I ask you also why this Ted Palmer did not telephone your secretary and say that he had the package. Why tell Emery Mills? And why wait until lunchtime? Did Palmer speak to your secretary? She didn't mention it. I'll ask her in the morning. Too late. Tomorrow we dispose of Amory Mills. Oh, come on. I don't want murder on my hands. You prefer your own death, Mr. Ferris? 
This is what you will do. On some pretext, you will have Mr. Mills leave New York. Ah, now, wasn't that pleasant? Very nice. I'll keep the babysitter until we have some supper. Scrambled eggs and uh, bacon, okay? Sure. I'm stuffed from all those hors d'oeuvres. Uh, come on out in the kitchen and keep me company. Oh, okay. I didn't like that uh, Mr. Warren. I wonder what his real name is. Mm. Alibaba, the rug dealer. <laughs> I don't know. He's a villain. <laughs> You're funny. Go ahead, laugh. I have an intuition about people. Something's wrong with him. Oh, darling. That's just as dumb as saying persons with eyes close together are criminals. Okay, okay. Uh, anything I can do? Hmm. Stir the egg slowly. I'm going in to check in with the babysitter. Stir slowly. Slowly, she says. <laughs> Mr. Warren is a villain. Oh, what a word. If we could bottle her energy, we wouldn't have a problem. Amory. Yes? You sound upset. What is it? Uh, uh, Pam's been here since four. I was out shopping and, until you came home from work. The telephone rang and Pam answered. It was, um, it was Lucille Ferris. She invited us to cocktails, right? Yes. Go on. Well, Pam just remembered something else. Just after I left... A man came in from the telephone company. He said he was there to repair the phone. I see. There's nothing wrong with the phone, Amory. Now there is. Well, what do you mean by that? You frighten me. I'll check the phones. They've been tampered with, bugged. What? But, but, but why? I work in a high-security job, darling. <gasps> then there are spies at EEI. It looks like it. If I'm right, I won't remove the bugs, but remember this. No matter who telephones our number, say nothing significant. Talk nonsense. Pretend that we've been taken in. The phone tap goes somewhere. I want to find it. And don't, under any circumstances, open the door to a stranger. <laughs> faces of everyone, but especially the face of a spy. The word creates an unpleasant picture. We think of a spy as someone dishonorable, and we're right. He's a thief, but the greater thieves are those who employ him. They do it to gain an advantage over others. So in the name of dishonor, the spy exists, never doubt it, and performs his furtive work and who is to say who is the more dishonorable? The spy or those who avail themselves of his services? I will return shortly with Act Three. Someone once wrote that a traitor never sees his danger until his ruin is at hand. History bears out the truth of the observation. Clement Ferris is a traitor. He is a powerful man in Energy Exploration Incorporated, and he has been selling information vital to our energy research to a spy named Warren. But a bland, apparently harmless young man named Amory Mills is a counter-spy, and the silent, deadly contest between the two has been joined. How it will be resolved, we are soon to discover. Ah, uh, good morning, Amory. Morning, Clem. You wanted to see me? Yes, this is a short notice, but I've had a call from young Fisher in New Orleans, the engineer. He'd appreciate it if you'd come down there right away. Oh, well, of course. What's the problem? Well, as I understand it, Fisher's work is being held up because his inventory on steel is low, and when he ordered additional material, the price was increased on him. But that can't be, Clem. We have a contract with the supplier. I'll get on the phone. No, I've already done that. I want you down there to settle the problem on the spot. Can you leave before noon? Well, sure. I'll go home and pack and head for the airport. I've already made reservations for you at the Cajun, not the Roosevelt. Well, you like the Cajun. It's small and intimate. Good luck, and telephone me tomorrow. Operator? 
operations lost and found? You've got the public payphone in Grand Central at the bottom of the stairs on the lower level. This is the anchorite. Good. Now listen carefully, Monk. I'm leaving at three for New Orleans on business, but it's not business. Ferris, or more likely his friend, a Mr. Warren, 5'6", thin, black eyes and swarthy skin, has become suspicious. I'm being sent on a one-way trip. I know what to do. Where are you staying? The Cajun. I see. Bourbon Street. All right. I'll handle it. Anything else? If I don't make it, you also know what to do. Yeah. Ferris is the guy. And Warren's the paymaster. I hope to see you, Monk. You will. You know something, Amory? I've decided that either you're really absent-minded or that you're devious. Oh, come on. Devious. That means crooked. Me? You know me. <laughs> I should. But sometimes I wonder... I mean, this trip, for instance. Well, darling, it came up all of a sudden. I told you that. We saw the Ferrises last night. Didn't Clem Ferris say something about it then? No. Why? Because I've never seen New Orleans. And with 24 hours' notice, I could have gone with you. That's why. Oh, well, darling, we'll make the trip together some other time. What's happened now in New Orleans? Oh, nothing very important. That must be important if Clem gives you a few hours' notice and sends you flying off. Darling, it's just some problem with a local supplier of steel we need to complete the installation of a new rig off the coast. Now, can I bring you something from New Orleans? Yes. You. Thanks, Laura. I don't know why, but well, I've got a very funny feeling about this trip of yours. Oh? I can't explain it. Just be careful. I will. And listen to me, darling. If you hear anything bad about me, ignore it. Will you do that? What? Are you superstitious, too? Not a bit. I'm just telling you. Don't worry about me. And don't worry about anything you might hear. Got that? Amory, you're holding something back. What is it? Look, darling, the work I'm in is sensitive. You know that. Even though I'm just a simple lawyer who shuffles papers all day long and draws deeds for condemning land, a lot of money is always involved, and so are a lot of interests. Guys can get hurt. You know that. I've told you that before. So be prepared not to believe anything you hear. I can take care of myself. Nothing's going to happen to me. Not bad. I wonder how long I'll have to wait. Who is it? Lost and found. Compliments of the Cajun, Mr. Mills. Well, how nice. A basket of fruit. May I put it on the table? Sure. Uh, may I suggest you don't touch it? All right. Until later. Whatever you say. Management also wanted me to check the fire escape. Go right ahead. But why would I need to use a fire escape? Is there danger of fire? I never can tell, Mr. Mills. Fire escape's useful if there's a fire or just for slipping away without being seen. <laughs> I'm not going to try to skip out if that's what you're afraid of. At least, not willingly. <laughs> that's the point. Uh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, Mr. Fisher. Well, I'm here, all right. Are you the engineer? Who... I, I see. Y yes, the sooner the better. Come right up. I'm in 211. Who is it? Misha. What? Mr. Warren. Sit down, Mr. Mills. I must talk with you. But I... I, I was expecting Mark Fisher. He's the engineer who... Oh, we know, Mr. Fisher. Well, I know you're a friend of Mr. Ferris's, but... I am mystified. Why, why are you in New Orleans? And why have you come to see me? Has Ferris sent you? You play the fool. I hope not, but I, I sure feel like one. 
Ferris sent me down to check on a problem Fisher's got, and I'm supposed to try to straighten it out, solve it. Are you involved? Who are you, really? Security for EEI? <laughs> you delight me. Well, that's nice to hear. Uh, uh, sit down and tell me how. I will do that. <clears throat> Have you come with some special instructions for Mr. Ferris? You might say that. I really don't understand. Well, then I will explain. Uh, uh, would you like some refreshment? I can call down for room service. No, no. That would be fatal. Fatal? Hey, what's going on? It will be fatal anyway. But my way, it is so much neater. You have been caught, Mr. Mills. I have. What's the charge? You are not Amory Mills. You are counterintelligence. Are you all right, Mr. Warren? You sound crazy. It is you who are, as you say, crazy. You know who I am, and you know who you are. Of course. You're an import-export dealer and a friend of Mr. Ferris's. I'm Amory Mills, a lawyer who specializes in land deeds. Let's take it from there. I also represent foreign interests. Oh? You play act this so well. No wonder, for so long, the ferret has had this awesome reputation for counterintelligence, but no longer. You have been found out. You really are crazy. I'm going to have to ask you to leave, Mr. Warren. I don't think so. This is my security. You shoot me? Why the devil would you do that? What have I done? Oh, yes, I will not hesitate to shoot you. What you have done, Mr. Mills, is to interfere... Mr. Ferris does not like this. I do not like this. He loses money. The interests I represent lose even more. We fail to make haste in delaying your country's search for sources of energy. You... You pay Ferris for... for information and then... and then sabotage our... Why, why that's incredible. <laughs> you are marvelous. The stage lost a great gift when it lost you, Mr. Mills. Come now. We will no longer talk like fools. I am a spy. Ferris is in my employ. You are a counter-spy. You work for your own country. You have been caught, Mr. Mills, and you will die. But not before you tell us everything you know. Who is us? Oh, there are several of us. You and I will leave here and go to another location. There we ask you questions. You make it sound unpleasant, Mr. Warren. It can be very unpleasant, I assure you. Our methods are very refined. You will talk, Mr. Mills. Rather than that, what if I resist? I have this gun with a silencer attachment. I shoot you. And carry me through the lobby of the hotel and out into Bourbon Street? We take you down the fire escape, Mr. Mills. The Cajun is not your modern hotel. That is why you are here. Mr. Ferris made the arrangements at my instruction. Clem Ferris. So you've been paying him off to supply you with information which you use to sabotage our energy program. It's hard for a simple guy like me to comprehend. It's like a cloak and dagger story. This is not a story, Mr. Mills. This is a real life. Now, on your feet. What? Oh, Clem. It's true, Loris. I, I don't know what else to tell you. His body was found in the river. The police identified him from the papers in his wallet. Whoever waylaid him beat him until he was horribly disfigured. Oh, oh Amory. Amory dead. But why? Loris, everyone in this company is a potential target for our enemies. Perhaps Amory had been snooping around. Oh, Clem, I don't... I don't know what else to say, Loris. I'll, uh, I'll see to the arrangements. And don't worry about money. Amory was killed in the, in the line of duty. You'll be well provided for. But without Amory, I... I don't want to live. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Monk. Who is he, Linda? Oh, I see a friend of Amory Mills. Yes, I... I suppose I'll have to see him. Tell him to come in. 
Mr. Ferris? Yes. Who's this other man with his hat pulled down over his face? What kind of gag? Hello, Clem. Amory Mills. But I thought... I've got to have a talk with you, Mr. Ferris. Amory, I I heard you'd been waylaid and murdered. I told Loris. I can hardly blame you, Clem. It could have been me. Some guy slipped me a knockout drop in a saloon and stole my wallet. The police caught him and brought him in. You, you say this this other man, the man who was found in the river with his with his face disfigured. He was dark haired, about five six, swarthy skin, a mid easterner. But why was he found in the river, disfigured and dead? I think you know why. I'm not a mind reader, Mister Monk, and I'm not a school crossing guard, Mister Ferris. Now get your hat and come with me. What? Unless you can prove otherwise, Mister Ferris, you're a traitor to the United States, and you're under arrest. Your wife okay? Yes, thank you. And thanks for New Orleans. <laughs> My job, Amory. Also, you mean a lot to us. Well, thanks to you, we got Ferris, Warren, and a whole network of his little assassins. You saw the evening's headlines? Yes. Monk, who really was behind all this? I mean, on our side. I don't know. Some say the ferret. Why? Well, several things. First, Ted Palmer really did pick up that package of Ferris's and drop it at Lost and Found. Yeah, I know. But if it had Ferris's address on it... His Larchmont address. Well, then he must have telephoned Ferris. He did. The message never got to him. Another thing. Who found out that Ferris was having drinks with Warren at Geno's? You said somebody telephoned you, but you couldn't say whether it was the voice of a man or of a woman. Yeah, that's right. Well, who was it who pulled the strings behind our backs? You mentioned the ferret. Who is the ferret? Could it have been Ferris's secretary? Linda? No, she was taken into custody. Is she there now? Well, I wouldn't know. I see what you're getting at. The ferret could be a woman. Could be. And we'll never know. <laughs> an old German proverb, if my aunt had wheels, she'd be an omnibus. And if each of us was honest, if each of us refused to reach for what others have and we do not, what a moral world it would be. Utopian? It is indeed. And that is why we have spies and why those spied upon have their counter spies. A final observation when I return shortly. any doubt about the validity of our story, I refer you to the newspapers and magazines and some of their recent reports. Can you doubt that there is a silent network throughout the world of men struggling against each other to obtain information and to invalidate it? It's rather a creepy idea, isn't it? Our cast included Elliot Reed, Patricia Elliott, Court Benson, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. It was a rough night, and I had to pay extra for a horse. We were nigh on to Snake Island when a squall hit it suddenly, and we broached to, fighting the riptide. Well, that was when we lost him. He fell overboard. Oh, no, Sir Bills, it weren't exactly like that. There was lightning, as you know, and coming around the point of the island, all of a sudden, like, there was what you might call a <laughs> illusion. What kind of an illusion? The figure of a woman above the water, like... Oh, no, not that one, Sir. This was an end. A woman's hand that reached up from the water and that Mr. Philip bent over to grasp. And before we knew it, he was overboard and underwater and lost. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by all state insurance companies. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... Join
this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this.